Hi, thanks for joining me today. I'm going to be going through what I believe are the three most common mistakes that students make at A level in maths. And this is coming from me as a full time maths tutor. I've got the three main errors that I believe students make here. So the first one is assuming invertibility. The second one is division division by zero or divided by zero and the third one is to do with integration so what I'm going to be doing in this video is going through each of these discussing what the issue is or the mistake that students normally make and how you can help yourself to avoid making these mistakes in the exam let's get stuck in Okay, so the first one is assuming invertibility. And what I mean by that is just assuming that a function is invertible. And a lot of the times it's not. And this, I believe, is the most common mistake because uh, at GCSE, you kind of do assume most functions are invertible. At A level, however, you cannot do that. So I've got an example question here. So imagine I'm trying to solve this question. Sine of 4x is a half. And I know that x is between 0 and 90 degrees. Well, what lots of students do, and this is what the mistake is, they'll just go, ah, just inverse sine both sides, and they'll get that 4x is inverse sine of a half, and either they know what that is, or they'll type that into their calculator, and that'll be 30 degrees, and then they'll divide both sides by 4 and go, yep, x is 7.5 degrees, that's between 0 and 90, job done. However, we cannot do this, this is not quite correct, because just because sine of 4x is a half, that does not necessarily mean that 4x is 30 degrees. It could be something else. So this is a mistake. I mean, technically this is a correct solution, but there is actually one other solution here. And for this, if this was maybe three marks, we probably would only get one mark from this question because we didn't consider the other solution. So how do we work out what the other solutions are for a problem like this? What I would recommend doing is just drawing a sine graph. So sine looks something like that. That's not a great diagram, but that will do. So this is just the graph, if I make this t and this y, this is just y equals sine t. And this is 180, and this is uh, 360. Um, and what I would do here is sine 4x is a half. Actually, what I would personally do is say let t equal 4x. And then you're solving the problem sine of t equals a half. And we also need to change our boundaries here. So x was between 0 and 90. So that means like the biggest that x can be is, well, just under 90. And so the biggest that t could be is, well, four times that. So the biggest t could be is 360. And similarly, the smallest t could be is zero. And so I'm solving sine t as a half between zero and 360. So I grow to my sine graph up here. t is between zero and 360. Half is roughly here. And we can actually see that there's two solutions here to this. And we need to work out what those t values are. So to work out this first one, we do use our calculator, or maybe this is one of the ones that you remember. This is 30 degrees. But to find this other one here, we need to use the symmetry of the graph. Um, so we can use the fact that there's a line of symmetry here at 90 degrees. And we know that this other solution here is on the flip side of this vertical line. And so like there to there, that distance there is 90 minus 30, and that's 60 degrees. And so I need to add 60 onto this vertical line to get this other solution. It's a bit cramped there, but 90 degrees plus 60 degrees is 150 degrees. So if sine of t is a half and t is between 0 and 360, from our diagram here, we know that there's only two possible values of t. It's either 30 degrees or 150 degrees. Now, t, though, is 4x. So we can say that 4x is 30 degrees or 50, 150 degrees and then divide both sides by 4 and we get x is either 7.5 degrees or x is, uh, what is that, 37.5 degrees. And that would be our answer here. So this is how we avoid losing uh, lots of marks on these questions. You know, if this was a three mark question, you would only get one mark if, if you'd like kind of just written this. However, to get all three marks, you have to find the other solution as well. Um, so you can do it like this by drawing a sine graph. Some people prefer to use a cast diagram. Uh, but yeah, this is a classic mistake that students make. And I think this is the most common out of the three here. Another similar example of assuming invertibility is taking the square root. So if I have x squared equals 9, that does not mean x equals 3. It means that either x is 3 or it's minus 3. So it's plus or minus, and you need to consider both cases. Normally, there'll be a clue in the question as to 
whether x is the positive 3 or negative 3. For example, if you know that x is positive, but you still have to show that x is plus or minus 3 and then just make a comment that, well, since we know x is positive, we can say x is 3. So you need to make it clear to the examiner that you know whether x is positive or negative. Anyway, that's the first most common mistake students make. Um, so the best way to avoid making this mistake is not just using the square root button on your calculator, not just using the sine inverse button or the cos inverse button or whatever on your calculator, just taking two seconds to step back and think about how many solutions you should have firstly by drawing a sine graph, doing this maybe substitution of t equals 4x or whatever it is, and knowing how many solutions you have and then firstly working out one of them by using the inverse sine button or inverse cos button, whatever, and then using the symmetry of the graph to help you determine the other solutions as well. Cool, let's move on to number two. So the second most common mistake is students dividing by zero. Now in math, that is a big no-no. You are not allowed to divide by zero. I'm not gonna explain why at the moment, but there are plenty of videos explaining why. Long story short is it causes maths to break down. So. Now, students normally, when they do divide by zero, uh, they don't do it on purpose, they do it inadvertently. But it's important that we recognise that it is still division by zero and it can lead to us not securing all the marks. So in a five or six mark question, we could only be getting maybe three of the marks. Let's have a look at this example here. So imagine we're trying to solve this equation. Five sine x minus two tan x is zero. And let's just say I don't know, x is between zero and 360 degrees. OK. So how would we go about solving this? Well, maybe the first intuitive thing to do is write tan as sine over cos. So this is going to be 5 sine x minus 2 sine x over cos x. And then we don't really like having fractions and equations, so we multiply both sides by cos x. And this would become 5 sine x cos x minus 2 sine x equals 0. And this is the stage where students make the mistake. They see sine x here and they see sine x here and then they just divide both sides by sine x and then they get the equation 5 cos x minus 2 is 0. Now we cannot do that. The reason we cannot do that is because there is a chance that sine of x is 0. Of course sine of x isn't 0 for every value of x but there are some values of x where sine of x is 0 and so we need to consider that. So what we do instead is, in, is not dividing by sine x, but pretty similar, is we factor it out. So instead of dividing by sine x, we are going to factor it out instead. And so if we factor it out, we get sine of x times 5 cos x minus 2 equals 0. And the beauty of this is you still take into account that sine x could be 0, because two things multiplied together must be zero or equaling zero must mean that one of them is zero so either sine x is zero or five cos x minus two is zero and then you just have two equations to solve so sine x equals zero and then cos x equals two over five and you solve them and they both have two solutions in this uh, in this interval so in total you'd get four solutions uh, for x Whereas if you had just divided by sine x, you would have completely ignored these solutions and only got these two here, costing you a lot of marks. So do be extremely careful when dividing by something in maths. Uh, if you're dividing an equation by a number, that should, that's fine. I mean, you shouldn't be dividing by zero, but any other number is fine. If you are dividing by a function of x, you have to ask yourself, could this function possibly be zero? If it could, you have to take that into account, maybe factor it out or consider that case separately. Um, with that being said, though, uh, a nice thing about this is if you have an equation with something like e to the x in, so if I had e to the x uh, times sine x plus e to the x uh, equals zero, the great thing about this is I can divide by e to the x because e to the x can never be zero. We can just see that from a quick sketch of the graph of e to the x. It looks like something like that, it's an exponential, but it never touches the x-axis at all, meaning that e to the x can never be zero. And so we could divide by it and then we get something like sine x plus one equals zero, and then we could solve that. Um, so if the function is never zero or is not zero in that range that you're considering, then by all means divide by it. But if it could potentially be zero, you have to take that with care. 
So the third one is integration. And I've deliberately left this kind of vague because there were a couple of things from integration I just wanted to mention here. The first thing is perhaps something that you've heard hundreds of times from your teacher. It is plus C. Do not forget plus C. Uh, so with an indefinite integral, i.e. it's an integral without any limits, so something like this, you'd work it out and then you'd have to make sure you put a plus C at the end. So it'd be some function of X plus C. That plus C is awfully important uh, and it's also important from the point of view of earning marks. If this question here was a four mark question you could work out the integral perfectly, do integration by parts here, work out what this f of x is, but if you forget plus C you can only score a maximum of three out of four marks, which is super annoying because it is just two symbols. So if you include those two symbols, it is the easiest uh, single mark you will get in an A-level maths paper. But it's also extremely annoying that if you forget the plus C, you missed out on a very easy mark. So how can you avoid forgetting plus C? Because everyone does it, myself included, I'd always forget plus C. What I think is a really good idea to do is at the start of the exam, go through each and every question and see, is there an integral involved? If there is, put plus C or something, just scribble it at the top of the paper. Uh, at the top of that question or something just so that when you just so you know that when you go to that problem you need to have a plus c at the end of your answer or like for example if you're checking at the end of the exam you've got some time go through those questions and just make sure you have put a plus c at the end of your integral so that's a really uh, easy way to ensure that you don't forget plus c the second thing i wanted to mention about integration was students assuming that the integral of f of x times g of x dx just equals the integral of f of x dx times the integral of g of x dx. And this is definitely not true. If you have two functions multiplied together, then you integrate them. It's not the same as if you integrate them separately, then multiply them. I mean, it would be lovely if this rule was true, but unfortunately it is not. So if you have two functions multiplied together and you're integrating them, you have to use another technique. Maybe it's integration by parts. Maybe there's a substitution there. It all depends on what these two functions are. So do make sure you never do this. And similarly, you know, the integral of f over g does not equal the integral of f over the integral of g for a very similar reason. However, it is true that when you add up integrals, so if I had the integral of f plus g, that is the integral of f plus the integral of g. So it does work for addition and subtraction, just not multiplication uh, and division. Anyway, those are my, what I believe are the three most common mistakes students make in A-level maths, or certainly the pure part of the course. Have I missed any common mistakes? Let me know in the comments down below. What do you think are some other big mistakes that students make in A-level maths? If you are doing your A-level maths, uh, let me know in the comments below, uh, and best of luck if you are. And uh, apart from that, have a lovely rest of your day. I'll catch you in the next one.